What's up, guys? We're here. Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm bringing you a not an updated guy, but an extension guide of the crushing hands build that we did and put out um, before we have a previous video on how to play crushing hands, the earlier version that doesn't require a whole lot of gear. But now we kind of went over to an overpower variant using the banished Lord's talisman. I'm, I'm sure you guys have seen this either on my stream or in my videos or some some other creators videos, but the overpower variant is extremely more powerful as far as damage output but we do suffer in some categories like armor um but i do have the resistances maxed out and i'm going to go over everything and kind of showcase this build to you guys and explain a lot of things that way so if you do want to make this build you guys get it and everything works perfectly so let's go over all the gear skills paragon etc and then of course we'll hit up a um pit run as we normally do in these guides so let's get right into it first things first let's go over the skills okay let's go over the skills oh this guy's giving me critical strike over power damage or something let me run away uh so let's break this down again we are not using a basic skill whatsoever you do not all you're going to be doing is just holding crushing hands and just button mashing the rest of your buttons and skills, demolishing everything on the screen. So we got two points in the thrash. It doesn't matter. This could be any other skill. does not matter. We just have two points here only to get to our core skill, which is going to be, which is going to be crushing hands into rampant crushing hands. Okay. It's damage is increased by 3% multiplicative for every stack of resolve. We have up to 39%. Excuse me absolutely huge here i'll go over the resolve stacks and how we get those in just a second next we got points of vigorous um just for some more vigor generation but really it's just to get to balance exertion so that way our core skills do more damage but they cost 20 percent or cost 12 percent more um vigor however our vigor is going to jump and ba basically be maxed all the time and we're going to be spending it i'll explain that once we get to the gear uh but you will not have to worry about vigor at all your resource in this build whatsoever Next, we got Vortex into Measured Vortex, okay? While we have a, ver a, a barrier, Vortex does 300% additional damage and knocks enemies down. So the damage itself really isn't what we're looking for. We really want the knockdown because we do so much more damage when enemies are knocked down. So this is just to help with that. Plus, it pulls them all in, and we can really just, like, destroy our enemies this way. It really helps to pull in a big AoE, and we just destroy everything. Um, next, we got points into Vocal Point, going into Apex to deal increased damage against vulnerable enemies. Uh, next, we have Mirage for increased dodge and critical strike, or critical strike chance into um, Unrestrained Power for even more damage against uh, while we are unhindered and unstoppable. We are pretty much going to be either one of these two almost nonstop, so you will always have this increased damage. Next, we got Ravager. This seems to be a core just skill pretty much that we're always going to have in a lot of the Spearborn builds. But Ravager increasing uh, ferocity into um, measure. So that way, while it's active, our core skills will instantly dash to our target. And all Vigor generation is increased by 30% multiplicative. So this is the main skill where while we're, we button mash Ravager and we're just slamming down uh, crushing hand you're gonna see me just jump to enemies and that's how we kind of just get to close that gap and that's why another reason why the build is just so fast um then we're gonna come down to our defensive skills we're taking a point in endurance uh to gain vigor and then we're doing uh perseverance to gain gain additional damage reduction per stack of resolve okay so resolve increases our damage reduction by 20 percent while active taking direct damage consumes a stack you can hold up to eight stacks so one thing about Resolve in like this build in particular, we are going to be so tanky that even though my armor is basically non-existent, it does not matter. We are so tanky. We deal so much damage. The build is going to be just fine. Then we max out Armored Hide, okay, for even more Resolve. We gain two Resolve every five seconds, and we encase ourselves, becoming unstoppable, which is one of the points I said, for 4.2 seconds, increasing our block chance, okay? So... Uh, and then we have block and then we increase our blocked damage reduction by 5% up to 20%. So you'll be able to do block enemies attacks. You'll have a barrier. You'll be unstoppable. It's just really hard. They, the, the enemies have to go through a lot of layers before they deal damage to our actual life total. Uh, then we're going to come down. We're taking anti-venom for increased poison resistance and max poison res. Um, this is just to help with poison resistance. That's all. 
Um, we're taking Scourge. Okay, this is another staple in the Spearborn uh, lineup. So we call forth the wave of insects that fear enemies, slows them, and then it does poison damage. But really hitting them and getting the lifesteal is very important. But we also gain an increased damage against crowd control enemies, which they automatically become slowed, which is fantastic. Next, we got counterattack. This just gives us a lot of dodge, and then it gives us increased critical strike damage for every close enemy. We, we are not a ranged build by any means. We are up close and in your face. So... This is really, really nice, and it helps with the per um, counterattack uh, cooldown is reduced per stacks of ferocity, and we have increased stacks of ferocity. So every single time that we gain ferocity and we lose it, we gain it back, resets this pretty quick. Then we're going to gain resilience for even more increased life because we are an overpower build. And then dominant, we deal increased damage to knockdown enemies. This is where the knockdown part is so important. So 20% multiplicative increased damage to knockdown enemies is pretty insane. And we have a 5% chance to execute non-bosses, uh, non which, I mean, that's just kind of negligible. We don't really care about that, but the, the increased damage is very important. Then two more huge staples. We got Potent, increased damage while uh, we have Jaguar skills, that damage that they take from us. And then second, we got Furnace for increased critical strike damage per stack of Ferocity, which is just fantastic. Um, next, we got the Hunter, which is the best ultimate in the game for Spearborn. There could be an argument for the Devourer, uh, depending on the build, but Jaguar with the Hunter is by far the best. Not only does it do a considerable amount of damage, but it when we overfill, we can overfill our Ferocity by four stacks, which is just insane. And not only that, we do increased damage, 100% multiplicative increased damage to injured enemies for eight seconds. And then on top of that... While this skill is active, we have a 40% chance to auto-reset the cooldown so we can cast it again. So Hunter is absolutely gigantic, <clears throat> insane. And on top of that, not to mention that it does jump you, so the mobility of this ultimate is nuts. Uh, then we're going to go into Resolution for increased damage. Uh, then we're going to go into Spiritual Attunement for increased vigor. And then we're going to go into Supremacy for even more damage. Our key passive of choice is Prodigy's Tempo. So every third consecutive cast of the same basic skill, which is going to be our main skill. I'll get into that in the gear. Uh, we do increase damage and reset cooldowns, which is very nice. So let's go into our Spear Hall. We're doing Jaguar into Gorilla. So Jaguar is going to allow all our skills to be Jaguar, and we deal um, increased damage. Or excuse me, not increased damage, but we unleash an additional strike, dealing 15% of the damage that we've already dealt. And then... Gorilla gives us max resolve, and then while we have at least five stacks of resolve, we're unstoppable. We are always going to have five stacks of resolve, so we're always going to be unstoppable, which procs our um, passive skill, which always gives us that increased damage while we're un unstoppable or un unhindered. So we're always going to be unstoppable. It is fantastic. Into the gear. So some of this gear, a lot of it is pretty much the same from the previous um, Crushing Hands build, if you guys watch mine or if you saw somebody else's. Um, the main combo here is the Rod plus the Ring of Midnight Sun. This combo is absolutely insane. Um, we gain counterattacks, a passive. We, when we um, critically strike, we regain 50% of our Vigor, okay? So we have a crap ton of Vigor. When we crit, we get our Vigor back. So Banished Lord's Talisman says, when we spend 275 of our primary resource, our next core skill is guaranteed to overpower. Um, our critical strikes that overpower deal increased damage. So this combo here is just kind of nuts. <clears throat> so pretty much every time we hit, it's going to be an overpowered crit uh, almost all the time. And then we're going to regain back all of our vigor because we're going to spend it all. So it's just a nonstop cycle, which is just nuts. You'll see it, in, see it when we go through the pit, but it's, it's insane. The rod is what makes our core skill um, – crushing hand be a basic which is why this works okay and then we do increase critical strikes here insane everybody's pretty much running this midnight sun and rod combo in every single build um now on top of that we've added a few things and changed some some uh, abilities around so we got moonrise of course we had moonrise in the previous crushing hands build so increased um basic attack speed um damage then we go into the blood rays we get more movement speed which is great uh, next, we have Eluding Doom. Or, excuse me, this is not even Eluding Doom. I forgot to swap this on my boots. Oh, no. What's on here? Pause. All right, guys. Updated. It's actually Apprehension. Once an enemy is slowed by at least 80%, they become feared, and we deal increased damage to feared enemies. 
Then, of course, we got Interdiction. All right. Gain 8% block chance per Resolve stack. We have an insane amount of Resolve stacks. So even more Resolve stacks gives us even more damage reduction, gives us even more block chance. So like I said, it's just very, very hard for us to die. Um, next, we got Redirected Force, of course. We used to have this over, I think, on our amulet, but now we had to move it to the gloves because of Banished Lord's Talisman. So Redirected Force, we gain increased critical strike damage equal to 58% multiplicative of our block chance. Blocking doubles this bonus. So the more higher block chance we have, based on how much resolve stacks we have, increases the chance of us to block, which in turn will give us more critical strike damage. And since we crit pretty much all the time, this is huge. Next, we got Duelist. We moved this so that way we could put the um, apprehension there. Duelist, maximum ferocity stacks increased by four. Fantastic. Next is the big piece that I get a lot of questions about, and some people just think that the build derives all of its damage from this new Shroud of False Death. However, that is a misconception. Um, but this chest piece is very, very powerful and does add a lot of damage. It's just not giving us all of the damage that we actually have. So on top of all the great stats there, right, the resource regen, the all stat, and the max life, which is fantastic, the plus one to all passives is huge. However, where it says plus 432% damage on your next attack after entering stealth. Okay, so you went with this chest piece on, if you haven't dealt damage in the last two seconds, you gain stealth and 40% move speed. So as you're dealing damage to monsters, like once you start proccing and hitting monsters to deal damage, you are going to get that nice 432%, but it's only additive. It's not multiplicative. So it's just additive, okay? It's not a multiplicative damage bonus. It's an additive damage bonus, all right? Which is nice still. But you'll see when we go through the pit here that I'm not always going to be in stealth. I'm going to be in stealth at a lot of times when, you know, I'm breaks between groups of mobs. But besides that, you know, this is only going to go in and out sometimes. I'm going to be attacking so often and so fast that I won't have that extra damage additive bonus all the time. So, but this this chest piece does add a lot of damage. So you could swap this out if you really want to. I really like it because the stealth is great. It allows you to move around and get through things faster, which I think is really, really cool. So, yeah, that's the chest piece, guys. Now, I do want to talk about something before we get into the Paragon. Um... Uh, real quick, just the our, our glyphs. So we're doing Zolza. So this is going to be invoking a skill from another class, and we gain 20% max life. We are an overpower build, so the, the, the runes that you want give max life. We want to have this because we want to have as max as much max life as possible. Okay, I, I know I has 10,000 right now. Once I start like using all my abilities, I go up to 30,000, or excuse me, I go up to like almost... 19,000 I think I'm at like 18 and change so with your barrier it's doubled so you deal that that much damage so it's it's pretty nuts our next runes of course are going to be um uh Paki, Paki, uh 300 of your max resource which is very easy to do gives us your barrier right so we have a barrier we block we have damage reduction I mean it's just so hard for us to die <clears throat> all right next paragon board or excuse me mercenaries so for this build, if you're playing by yourself, you're going to use Rahir and Varana, okay? Rahir, you're going to follow these steps down here. You're going to come down for shield charge into um, Rahir's guard for more armor. Then you're going to come down and grab Crater. Crater is the big one here because this pulls enemies in and, in, and it stuns them, right? So the more stuff that we can do, the stunning is fantastic. Then we got Iron Wolf's Call, which gives us increased damage at costing no resources. Fantastic. Next... Verona, huge, okay? So, Verona, you have a couple things here, all right? So, um, when you're playing by yourself, you're going to use Earthbreaker, okay? Earthbreaker is going to knock the enemies down. You're going to deal a lot more damage when they're knocked down. It's fantastic. However, you can do Bloodthirsty. You, she gains a bunch of attack speed and movement speed and Unstoppable, but it gives you 10% attack speed uh, at the same time for the same duration. I like the tax speed because we knock down so often. The addition here is fine, but the just flat out attack speed is just better in my opinion. And then you'll set it to whenever you cast any skill in combat. Um, so either one of those is really good, but that is the combo that I'm using for this build. You could definitely maybe swap out um, right here for, uh, was it Lobo or however you say his name, Lobo. But those were the mercenaries that I would use for the build. Now, let's go ahead and go into Paragon real quick. Uh, a link to this will all be down in the description. I'm just going to go over the glyphs that I'm currently using. So we got, what is this, Menegrist. 
uh, Mendristus, whatever it is, I don't know. Um, anyway, dealing damage with your Gorilla, Jaguar, Eagle, or Centipede skills increases damage. Fantastic, right? And then the Incarnate skill, which is what we're using, it has even more increased damage. Next, we're doing uh, Colossal, which is one that we used from the previous um, build. We gain increased damage for each stack of Resolve. Fantastic. Then we got Headhunter for even more just damage to Elise and overall damage. Then we have Outmatch for increased damage against non-elites and bosses. Um, fantastic. And then our very last one is Spirit, of course. Same thing from the previous board. Chris Strikes increased the damage the enemies take from us uh, by 3% up to 15, multiplicative. So this is fantastic. Uh, the way that the board is filled out is to try to get it to where your resistances will be maxed. So you're, you can get your resistances maxed, which is great. Your armor is just going to be incredibly low. Do not fear about that. You will see. We're going to go through and just do a base 100, um, and it does not matter. Like, having 100 armor instead of the 1,000 does not matter. So we're, we're just too tanky. It, it, it's irrelevant. And again, my gear, like, I only got went to 9 on each of these just to hit certain benchmarks but um you can do this with all eight gear you could do this with all level four gear doesn't matter um in in the gem slots we got uh cold resistance resist all and then shadow resistance just to fill it out and then the rest should be emeralds for all of your dexterity now one thing i want to talk about before we go do this so that way people when you start building this you don't get caught up with well <clears throat> why is it my uh my vigor high enough so the 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 like main point of this build is to get vigor to 275 you want to get it to 275 so that way you always are overpower critting every single hit right because as soon as you're at 275 every single time will crit and then it will replenish on its own so every hit is an overpower <clears throat> the question is well how do you get there right so there's a few ways to do this first in your helmet if you can get it, you want to get a GA maximum resource in your helmet, okay? If you do not have maximum resource GA in your helmet, then get one that just has maximum resource, and then you want to try to crit on it. Um, however, you really want to be critting on your resilient temper because that just gives you more life, which in turn gives us more damage because it's more overpower, right? Um, but you want to get a GA max resource, so that's the first way. Next is the, uh, where is it? Uh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Um, obviously, in your rod, if you can have a GA on your rod for maximum resource, that will help. You do not want to crit it, though, when you're tempering because you want the chance for your core skills to hit twice because the more hits, the more damage that you're going to do. But if you do have a, um, a crit maximum resource rod, that is perfectly fine. Just make sure, or excuse me, a GA, just make sure that you are using the temper. When you do go to, to, to temper, or excuse me, masterwork, make sure you get chance for core skills to be hit twice. So that's two. So you got your helmet and your rod, okay? Uh, I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything else. Okay, good. The last bit of it is going to come in the Paragon. So you're going to have a lot of stuff here with Paragon. Excuse me, let me go find it. Uh, you're going to have a lot of stuff in here on this board in particular, which is going to be your sapping, uh, sapping board with, uh, this glyph because it gives you plus 26 maximum resource. And then all these nodes here, maximum resource, maximum resource, maximum resource, maximum resource. Okay. So this glyph in general is going to give you all of your maximum resource, which is very, very important. You want to make sure that you have all the points and you hit all this criteria when you're doing this build, um, because we need to get to that threshold, okay? Now, outside of that, <clears throat> the last way, as you guys can see, I'm only at 260. So the last way to do it is you come down and you get an elixir of resourcefulness. You're going to gain 20% um, resource cost reduction, but 25 max resource. So when I pop this, I go to 285. And that's, be <clears throat> that <clears throat> excuse me. And that's before any of my abilities kick in. Because as you know, if you go back and look at the skill tree... When we come down here to these um, these like master powers, it says right here, your maximum vigor is increased by 40 while you have an ultimate skill equipped. So this is the last one. We got our ultimate skill equipped. This is the last spot where we gain just 40 more increased vigor while we have it equipped. So all of those things, so your helmet, your rod, your, your spot right here, the spiritual attunement, and then... <clears throat> 
on your Paragon board up here is where you're going to get all your resource. Now, again, it's not going to hit you on the cap unless you're master working it, you know, to its absolute max and you're in your critting. But you can see here that I don't even have it all maxed. And then all you do is just use an elixir of resourcefulness. Very easy to make. If you don't know where you can make it or the cost, you come over here to the alchemist. You come to advanced elixirs. You just come down to, uh, excuse me, not fortitude. You come down to resourcefulness. Okay, it's 10 bundled herbs and 10 angels breasts. Super easy to make. So you pop that and then you are at your 285. So now every single hit will overpower. So that's it, guys. That Hopefully that answers a lot of questions. If you guys have any more, let me know down in the comments. But we are going to go ahead and go pop uh, this and then we'll pop a herb for more armor. Um, and then we'll go ahead and do this 100 just so you guys can see this. The build is very easy to play. Again, you're just holding crushing hands, and all you're going to do is just smash the rest of the buttons as they come up. And, like, re like the cooldowns get reset. Super easy to do. You're just blasting. You can see all the damage that we do. Like, I'm not even... You just, you just jump around. It's so great. Come in here. Cyclone everything in. And it's great. I'm just holding my crushing hands button <clears throat> I'm just holding crushing hands to move I'm just holding it it's super good and you can see the cooldowns on all my abilities get reset so often it's super easy man everything just gets reset everything just just obliterates and dies you're so fast you know what I mean it's it's great this is like, I thought I really enjoyed the Quill Volley build, which it is still a very good build, by the way. But I don't know. There's just something about being crushing hands and just being like, like Smash Bros that, it, I don't know. It, it's pretty fast. I'm not even going to grab artillery because we don't need it. You know how we do it in these videos, guys. We don't grab any of that stuff. But being a Smash Bro is just cooler, man. It's just cooler. Everybody knows it. Quill Volley, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, Quill Volley this, whatever. But being a Smash Bro is just so much so much more fun and just so much cooler, you know? And again, the build is really, really fast. I don't even have it like crazy master worked yet. You know, I kind of just took some, oop, some of the abilities that... Uh, or some of my tempers just on like whatever I got second. You know what I mean? Just, just to have it. But, man, it's just super satisfying. So, guys, I encourage each and every single one of you, as you're watching this video and this gameplay, if you've been sticking around, I really do appreciate it. Become a Smash Bro, okay? Become a Smash Bro. Have fun. Join me, Smash Brothers, all day long. And you, still, you can see that we're still pretty fast, right? Like, if I have this, like, super master worked and really super optimized then you know i could be doing a little bit more damage um, i could probably be getting through it just a tad bit faster but really you know as long as we can do 100s and get our glyphs leveled up that's the other thing i think my, like some of my glyphs are still in the 60s um some of them are in the 70s which is great but we don't even have our glyphs maxed out and that's what makes like not only the build super good but another testament to how powerful spearborn is so I'm really happy that they're not going to be nerfing this at all. You know what I mean? So we're at like a three minute 100, which isn't bad. We want to get that down to two minutes at some point, but you know, we're doing okay. And then against bosses, guys, it's the same thing. You can see how taken we are. Ooh. Especially when we get him like vulnerable. Watch, watch him when he get when he gets staggered. Just we're doing billions of damage. And he just gets he just gets annihilated. So yeah, guys, crushing heart overpower build. It is phenomenal. It's super fun. Um, I thought, you know, as I was building this, that you know, with my armor being so low, I was super worried. But it does not matter. You are so tanky. It's so hard for you to die. And again, you can see here that like we go up in our fortify. So we have like life, fortify, and barrier, the 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 block chance, everything. The build is just insane i love it so thank you guys so much for watching like the video comment down below let me know if you guys have any questions etc um don't forget to subscribe guys and as always stay gaming i'll see you guys in the next one peace